Hi, we're Moon Audio. We make cables. You might be asking yourself, what happens when I purchase a cable at Moon Audio? Well, we're gonna show you today. I'm here with Daryl, and he's gonna walk us through how to make a dragon cable. Awesome. Hi, Daryl. Hi. So we just got an order in from Neil in California. Hi, Neil from California. He ordered two separate cables. We're gonna do one of those two. Okay. Um, so the order came in, it's for a five foot Black Dragon Meze cable, 109 nice. Pro to a 4.4. I believe he's gonna be connecting to the Griffin. Nice. He used the list your devices, so we appreciate that. <laughs> so, so where's our cable? Yep. Yeah. So I already grabbed the cable and the connectors. They're all ready to go. So I'll sit down and start building. So what kind of, so we have a black dragon here? Yes. Can you talk a little bit about kind of some of the different lines we do? We have a black dragon, a silver dragon, like yes. what are the differences when people look at our website? They're like, what's, what are the differences between the dragon cables? So uh, the composition um, and the geometry uh, as well. So the, as far as the silver dragon headphone, black dragon headphone and blue dragon headphone, they have the same type of geometries. Uh, they just use uh, different conductors. The blue and the black being copper based and the silver being silver based. Okay. Um, uh, we, rec we do recommend the Black Dragon for the 109 Pro because it does have that little spike around, what is that, eight or 10 hertz, uh, kilohertz. Okay. So the Black Dragon uh, kind of smooths that out. Um, so we say, we say here at Moon Audio, materials matter. Yes. Right? Because of the different compositions of the cables, they have their own kind of distinctive sound signatures. Is mm -hmm. there, can you kind of explain what a sound signature is and maybe how different cables have different ones? Yeah. Um, let's see. I would say the copper definitely gives you uh, a warmness. Um, it can smooth out the trebles, um, kind of give you a little more presence in the bottom end, mm -hmm. uh, where the silver definitely adds more clarity, more detail. And on certain type of headphones, it can even be too much, okay. uh, too revealing. Mm -hmm. And that, it's all personal, right? Right. Everyone uh, hears differently. Yes. There's no right or wrong. I myself... Uh, I'm a fan of the Black Dragon on most headphones. So, um, yeah. Real quick, can you talk about what you're doing right now? Yeah, I'm just soldering the 109 connector. It's a slimline 3.5. Okay. Um, so I'm just soldering that up. Now you've already made your split on the cable. Yes. I see. Yeah. Yeah, we make splits in mass. It just helps with efficiency. Okay. Um, here, I'm going to test the... the fit. This cable is a little difficult with this uh, wire because the, the slimline connector is uh, slim. <laughs> That's because it kind of gets, it's more recessed into the ear cup than other headphones, right? Correct. It's not a flush. Yeah. It's not a flush, it doesn't have a large opening. It's right. very, um... Do you have a favorite uh, type of connector? Because we have a bajillion, I think we have what, a bajillion and 43? Six. Yes. Connectors at Moon Audio that you can choose from? Yeah, we have quite a bit. I mean, as far as amp ins go, 4.4 .4 is a favorite, which we'll be doing here for the Griffin connection, the yeah. balance. 4.4 uh, .4 is great because it's it's beefier than the 3.5 and definitely the 2.5, as well as it is it's becoming a universal plug because it has the ground and the fully. Uh, it's a five pole, right? So it has the okay. ground and the positive and negatives of the right. left and right channel. So it can be used in many different applications. Do you see a lot of 2.5s still coming through here? No, 2.5s are pretty you rare these days. feel like they're getting days. phased out? Yeah. They were kind of the standard there, I know, at least for 
balance connections on older AK players. Yeah, they were the balance standard for a while. Uh, 4.4 has definitely taken uh, precedence over that. Nice. All right, so now we'll start the 4.4. What are you doing there? I'm just cutting the jacket so it can get to the internal Taking off some cable. of the shielding? Yeah, we'll remove some of the shielding. Uh, we will uh, put the sh shielding on the ground connection. Mm. It kind of creates a passive uh, grounding effect. Okay. So, Are you just twisting them like that, just to kind of make it easier to cut off? Yes. Okay. And then we'll just remove all the internal. Now we're, all, we're only left with the shielding and the four conductors. Okay. I think this is, uh, the black is four by 21.5, something like that. Would you say soldering is a difficult skill set? Um, I would say it takes time to master. Because um, <clears throat> there's certainly a level of like precision that I'm watching you do right now. Yeah. Like, got to make sure that you don't put too much on there. You don't put too little, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it'll all come down to, you know, once you can solder some things you can solder mo most things right? hmm. as long as you have the pen held and you think about the layout beforehand so I'll show you how the 4.4 works with nurse. that type of planning out so there I just soldered the ground connection now I'm going to need to find my left and right Is there a difference between gold connectors and rhodium connectors and kind of like, is it aesthetics? Is it playing to sound quality, durability? What what can you say as far as that goes? Um, I mean, there's a sound quality difference for sure. Um, longevity as well. Um, Yeah, I mean, we we tend to kind of pair things uh, like the standard connections are usually gold mm. and the premium are rhodium. Okay. Um, I guess I cut myself a little bit, sorry. <laughs> Just shows you're putting blood, sweat, and tears into creating our cables, Daryl. Yes. That's good. Now, when you were um, testing the polarity there? Mm. Well, this is just for left and right. Okay. My uh, polarity is from the the white and clear um, uh, jackets. Okay. So what do you... <clears throat> so when you're doing things, when you're testing things like the polarity and the different, like the ring tip sleeve and all that, what, mm. is, what are you doing there? Why is that important? Yeah, well, I mean, if we if we hook things out of phase uh, and the polar polarity is on reversed on the left and right channel, mm -hmm. your brain is getting <laughs> two very different <laughs> signals from each side, so it, it can it can even cause headaches. And but your brain definitely knows something is up. Um, so Interesting. Yeah. So instead, so like, w what would that sound like? if something was out of phase. So like most things sound centered, like clearly have left and right separation, but mm -hmm. most things would sound like it's in front of you, where if they're out of phase, they kind of sound like they're behind you. Oh, interesting. Um, hmm. The more you know. Yeah. So here's what I mean by uh, planning ahead uh, and kind of knowing the connector beforehand. So now I have everything laid out here to be soldered directly to the connections and not have anything bridged between them. Is there 
kind of universality with how things are lined up, like with the ring tip sleeve, like do you know it's ground, then left, then right, or is it always different depending on the connector? Um, there's some universality, but it usually comes down to if what the manufacturer's doing, because okay. some people want to be different, and that's fine. So we got to figure out, figure out, or ask them, like, hey, what are you doing differently? Because yeah. um, we don't want to send the wrong cable out. Right. Look at the level of detail, the level of precision. And we just had an example where we had a customer reach out to the company for us because he, um, the company had gone uh, bankrupt. Bankrupt, uh, yeah. No longer as it existed. And luckily, he had a former email from them and had, still had the pin out. So that was great. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what's the next step here? So, now we're just going to make, uh, we're going to close this up and make sure that we have uh, nothing touching. Just kind of provide a level of rigidity. Is this premium high end hot glue you're using? Yes. Okay. Only the best. And just wrap this to protect all of that, hmm. even though it's covered by hot glue um, from the cover okay. of the connector. And we'll slide down now, twist on that. Unfortunately, we're going to cover this beautiful uh, Moon Audio uh, print. Okay. So what are you doing there? Is that just to kind of keep it in place on the jacket? Yes, that and it provides a... When this, when the heat shrink goes down, it provides a... Uh, a smooth transfer from this diameter to okay. this diameter. Nice. As well, it does provide some strain, strain relief as well. Okay. Let that set while I grab uh, the shrink heat wrap's shrink. my favorite, or the, yeah, the heat shrink's my favorite part of the process. Yes. Are you get a close up of this? Look at that. Look at that. Here I'm just stretching so, it a little bit so it'll fit over. Don't need to do much. Have that there. Is it easy to rip them accidentally? Uh, yeah. I mean, it depends on how hot it, it gets in here. Oh, interesting. Probably level of humidity as well. Hmm. Um, but like I said, I didn't stretch that that much. Just needs to fit over. That's a good temp now. So it's pliable somewhat? Yeah. I want to go ahead and line that up with the dragon on our cable. Is there a reason for that? Just keep everything in line. Um, just a level of detail that we try to stick to. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to heat down that glue a little longer. And it's just like magic. a little hug. Yep. Like I said, that provides a nice transfer from this to the cable. Looks nice. Okay. Do you have a favorite step in the process that you like to do? Um, like, do you like doing splits? You like testing it? You like putting the connectors mm, on? No, I actually prefer. I do not prefer testing. <laughs> I don't. Is that don't why you made me do it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I actually, I can like just keep it. pumping out cables, and you're over there testing. I can, yeah. Um, so yeah. So from here, just more of the same. So we're Ross gonna, tested cables too. Yeah. For the record, we're gonna plop a little in there. Oh, that was way same too much. process on the headphone side. Essentially, yeah, except we're, <laughs> we're going to add the tiniest a bit of glue in here just to protect that center from that ground wire. Yeah. Uh, myself a little bit over there. 
Why? Hmm? <laughs> I forgot what I asked. That's okay. You can what? tell me. The right. center and the ground wire. Oh, the center and the ground wire? Why? Oh, we don't want them connecting. Oh, right. Because yeah, then, Cause then you get a shorter be. signal. <laughs> bing, bing. Yeah. And then these just screw on from here. Nope. Be a real bummer if you went ahead and connected the connector but forgot to put that part on beforehand, yeah. right? Yeah, it's happened. That's for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. Essentially, you'll just have to take it off and yeah, resolder. Sometimes you gotta play around with the what is what is de de desoldering? Mm -hmm. Is that a the thing? The removal of solder. Yeah. yeah. Usually, it by some kind of suction. Okay. Um, whether it be a vacuum or you can use a solder sucker, which just you know hmm. it pulls the air in, okay. creates kind of like it creates a vacuum, right? Interesting. Um, I've heard Drew talk about desoldering before, so I was like... Mm. Yeah. Mostly you see it on boards. I mean, like, technically, you know, like, when we re-terminate something, mm. we're desoldering. So I'm just getting a little more grip here. These are fun to close sometimes. Are we getting any um, headphone terminations in of people, like, wanting to put in uh, hardwired... Dragon cables on their headphones? Not so much anymore. It was a thing back in the day, but there's so many uh, companies that do detachable already. Cables now, yeah. Yeah. But we do get it from every now and then. And those are fun because, you know, it's something different. Yeah, I know, sure. like, Grado is a big one. Yeah. Right. So from here, so we're just doing left and right heat shrink after those set okay. and be good to go. Well, then we have to test it, right? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to test it. You'll have to test it. I'll test it. <laughs> About how long does it take for, I guess, the cooling process? Depends on how hot it is in here. Being that it's the end of the day, it gets pretty warm in here. Soldering going all day, lights on all day. Yeah. Computers. It's hard work, heat man. guns, yeah. Rock music, headbanging. Yeah, there's a lot of movement Calisthenics. in here. Yeah. I hear you. Uh, now, is there a specific placement there? Yes. Like, so, why are you not covering that one up all the way? So that has to do with how far this is going into the headphone. Mm. Yeah. So we've generally found that right in there is where it needs to go. Got a nice little shape there. Oh, nice. Now we just repeat the same thing on the right. That's it. Um, then we'll test it. Okay. Should be good to go. All right. So what's the testing? What's the what's the testing process like? So we have two. We usually test things two ways. So we have like our tester box, the classic tester box, and we also test with a pair of headphones. So we have okay. a track that we listen to. Uh, may or may not be working on a new track potentially. Oh. Oh. Um, Teaser. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it gets tested with a pair of headphones. We do the wiggle test. And That's then we'll to hear if like, they're static in the line, yeah. if you're wiggling the connectors. You, yeah, if there's like a cold solder joint or something to get soldered all the way or if there is a short, as soon as you wiggle it, you're going to hear it. It's going to cut out. And you're testing yeah. also for phase? Yeah, right? phase left and right. And okay. then in the tester box, it makes sure that this pin's connected to the, the, the correct corresponding and then boom, boom, okay. boom, 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 boom for all all connections here and all connections up here. Why do both? 
Um, to guarantee that we send out the best uh, product product that works yeah. well. Yeah. It works real good. Because cool. we want people to be happy and we'll make sure that we're providing the best uh, end experience. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Ready you want to test? Yeah, let's throw it on the tester box. All right, let's do it. Let's see the old tester box. She a little dirty, but that's okay. So what, how does this whole contraption work? So basically this performs a sweep. So, uh, I'll stop the beeping for now. <laughs> so one is left positive, right, two is right positive, three is left uh, negative, and four is right negative. So on a balance connection, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, and nothing else should be connected as we do our sweep. So we start at one, we do our sweep, we go to two, good, do our sweep, three, good, do our final sweep, four. Nice. And then this is where kind of do a final inspection of the heat shrink, left and right, right here. And, and we I'll clean check, it off and you know, check the split. Bag it up. Luckily, I just did some <clears throat> packing up, so this will get our little special cleaner process. Spit shot yeah. by Daryl personally. Yes. We'll clean that up. <laughs> we don't actually use Daryl's spit. No, we don't no, do that. No, you don't want that. Very acidic from all the coffee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There we go. Nice. Final product. Well, Neil, hope you like your cable coming to you in California. Um, if you have any questions about the cable building process, leave a comment. Remember to like this video and subscribe for more. Uh, Daryl, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And Appreciate we'll catch you next time. It.